Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, May 19th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your three news now early update. We have a lot of things to get to today and a lot of things that are actually not related to COVID-19 coronavirus that are topping our headlines on WKYC.com and our WKYC app today. And we've got some good news for you at the end if you want to get out and you love those animals and you want to experience something that you haven't ever actually been able to do before, but you can now do for the very first time here in Northeast Ohio. We'll start first, like we do each day, with the most up-to-date numbers from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19 and how it's impacting the state of Ohio. Those numbers come out every single day at 2 p.m., so the numbers that we'll talk about are from Monday at 2 p.m., and another reminder of why we are looking at these numbers every day when we're looking at the day-to-day -day reported cases and the day-to-day -day reported deaths along with the hospitalizations and the people in the intensive care unit. What we're looking for based on guidelines that have been recommended by medical experts and President Donald Trump's administration is we're looking for a 14-day downward trend in new cases and new deaths and all these other metrics by which we're measuring the impact of COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio. That's what the experts have said we need to look for if we want to consider reopening things on any kind of a larger scale. So that's the point of all this. Okay, so with that in mind, here are the most up-to-date numbers from Monday. Monday, we saw 531 new cases reported over the 24-hour period from Sunday at 2 p.m. to Monday at 2 p.m. That's an increase in new daily reports of new cases up from Sunday. On Sunday, at that same time, we saw 449 new cases, and that was after several days of a decrease in new cases. And that brings our total number of cases of COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio to 28,454. Now remember, that's based on the expanded CDC definition, so that includes both people who have been tested and gotten a positive test result for COVID-19 and also people who probably have COVID-19 based on medical experts treatment of that individual and there are many reasons why someone might not be tested one of the reasons that we've seen from a lot of medical experts is if it doesn't change the treatment protocol they're not using a test on an individual because testing resources are limited because there's not widespread access to many of the ingredients in the tests that are required in order to fully complete the tests in terms of number of new deaths yesterday we saw 32 new deaths reported. Now, there is a lag in reporting, do keep that in mind. So these new cases, these new deaths may have actually been confirmed over the past several days, but these were reported on Monday at 2 p.m. And that is also up from Sunday, where there were 15 new deaths reported. And that was after, again, as well with the deaths, several days of a decrease in the number of newly reported deaths. So that brings the total number of deaths in the state of Ohio related to COVID-19 to 1,000 657. Something that's a little bit more real time that we can take a look at is the number of hospitalizations and the number of intensive care unit admissions related to COVID-19. On Monday, we saw 77 new hospitalizations reported, bringing the total number of hospitalizations from March 9th when COVID-19 was first reported here in Ohio to almost 5,000. That number is 4,900. 98. As of Monday, the active number of hospitalizations, the number of people currently hospitalized related to COVID-19 was 912. So about 20% of those hospitalizations are currently in the hospital right now. And in terms of intensive care unit admissions of those hospitalizations, there were 34 new intensive care unit admissions reported on Monday and 367 active intensive care unit admissions. So about of a third of the hospitalizations have people in the intensive care unit here in the state of Ohio right now. And the total number of people who have been admitted to the ICU related to COVID-19 since this all started, since we became aware that this was present here in Ohio is 1,328. I want to take a moment to celebrate the life right now of Annie Glenn, who was married to the late NASA astronaut and U.S. Senator John Glenn. Annie Glenn has passed away. It was confirmed to WBNS-TV, and that was confirmed by Debbie Allender, the operations director of the John and Annie Glenn Museum in New Concord, Ohio. She passed away this week, and we send our respects to the Glenn family. She was an advocate and an educator in communication disorders, and 
We rarely saw her appear in public since her husband John Glenn died in 2016. Now, John Glenn had already been awarded a Congressional Gold Medal, but there is a resolution right now urging Congress to award the Glenns a joint medal, and that is pending in the Ohio legislature. Again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Glenn family right now. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is making headlines because she is criticizing President Donald Trump for his use of hydroxychloroquine and also because she called him obese, which is medically accurate according to scientific standards, but she did call him morbidly obese, which may not be medically accurate. So here's what Speaker of Pelosi, Nancy, uh, excuse me, here's what Speaker Pelosi said on CNN. She said, he's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved by the scientists, especially in his age group and his, shall we say, weight group. Morbidly obese, she say. They say that is what Nancy Pelosi said on CNN. So to talk about the facts that she mentioned there, Trump is 73 years old and at his last checkup in February of 2019, he did pass the official threshold for being considered obese because his body mass index is 30.4. Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a body mass index of 40 or above is considered severe obesity, which can also be called morbid obesity. So Pelosi is taking some heat for calling him morbidly obese. This all comes after President Donald Trump told reporters on Monday that he's been taking the drug hydroxychloroquine and a zinc supplement daily for about a week and a half now. Hydroxychloroquine is a treatment for malaria, lupus, arthritis, some other things, and he is taking this drug despite warnings from the government that it should only be administered for COVID-19 in a hospital or research setting due to potentially fatal side effects. The FDA told health professionals last month that it shouldn't be used to, COVID, to treat COVID-19 outside of these settings because some of those side effects include heart rhythm problems, including deaths from poison control centers and other health providers reporting these after people had taken hydroxychloroquine. At the White House, Trump said that his doctor did not recommend that he take hydroxychloroquine, but that he actually requested it himself from the White House physician. He said he started taking it because he thinks it's good and he's heard a lot of good stories about it. However, two large studies, each involving about 1,400 patients in New York, which has been the hotbed of COVID-19 here in the U.S., recently found that there was absolutely no benefit to taking hydroxychloroquine. And two new stu studies that were published on Thursday in the medical journal BMJ actually found the same conclusion, that there was no medical benefit to taking hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID-19. So the White House physician, Dr. Sean Connolly, released this statement through the press office saying that after numerous discussions with Trump about the evidence for and against using hydroxychloroquine to treat and prevent COVID-19 symptoms, he said, quote, we concluded the potential benefit from treatment outweighed the relative risks. Now, keep in mind, there's been a lot of conversation as well about people who actually need hydroxychloroquine to treat their issues that are not related to COVID-19 and not wanting to create a situation where there is a shortage of that medication when it hasn't been proven by medical professionals to be beneficial in any way for treating COVID-19 coronavirus. Here in Ohio, we know that swimming pools will be opening on May 26. So here's a question that is at the top of everyone's mind. Can COVID-19 spread in swimming pools? So here's what the experts need to say. Here's what the experts say about this. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say this, quote, there is no evidence that the virus that causes COVID-19 can be spread to people through the water in pools, hot tubs, spas, or water play areas. The CDC goes on to say that proper maintenance and disinfection with chlorine and bromine should inactivate the virus in the water. Now, if you didn't grow up around pools, you might not know this, but chlorine and bromine are pretty typical treatments that you're gonna put in your pool, pretty typical chemical treatments to keep your water clear, to keep it clean. So these aren't some special things that people need to do in order to make a pool safe and safer and less likely to spread COVID-19, according to the experts. So the CDC saying that the usual treatments of chlorine and bromine should be enough to make sure that any virus that is in the water isn't spreadable through that water. But do keep in mind, though the water itself may actually be okay, the CDC does remind people that you're going to want to protect yourselves from others at the pool by making sure that you stay six feet away 
and you want to be doing that hand washing after you come in contact with high touch areas and don't be touching your face after you touch those high wash those high touch areas before washing your hands and it's also recommended if you are going to visit a pool that you take your own disinfective wipes to clean off the public pool chairs before you and your family use those chairs so Pools have been given permission to restart operations again on May 26th here in Ohio, so next week, but water parks are still ordered to remain closed at this time. Of course, as we get new information about that from Governor Mike DeWine and Dr. Amy Acton from the Ohio Department of Health, we'll be sure to share that for you on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. There is a scam out there that you need to be aware of. There's a scam going on related to Target groceries. You may have gotten a text that says Target is giving people $175 in groceries this week to support the nation during the coronavirus pandemic and that you just need to click on a link to get those free groceries. Well, that's not true, so don't fall for that. If you get that text message, just ignore it. Don't click on the link because when you do click on the link, scammers take your information without knowing it and installs a virus, spyware, malware, or ransomware on the device that you clicked the link on and it can be done without you knowing it and often it's virtually undetectable. And then after that virus is installed, after that malware is installed, they can then log your keystrokes so they can see you typing in passwords to mobile banking, your emails, credit card informations when you make online purchases. So it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true, and it's definitely dangerous in other aspects. You could potentially have somebody stealing your identity and all kinds of things. So do not click on that link for $175 in free groceries from Target, because it's just not true. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but hopefully this helps you not to click on something that will make your life more difficult than it has to be right now, right? There are enough things that we're dealing with, so just don't click on the link. Here is some good news for people in Northeast Ohio and something that you have never been able to do before that you can now do. The Cleveland Metro Park Zoo is launching drive through visits. They're calling it Cruise the Zoo, and you'll be able to check out the tigers, the grizzly bears, the snow leopards, the reindeer, the lions, and the kangaroos. And the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo employees will help guide families along a specified route that will also feature animal ambassador experiences. So there will be people there sharing information, but you're not getting out of your car. You're not going to be interacting with the people who work at the zoo. It's called Cruise the Zoo, like I said, and that's open from 10 to 4, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Wednesday through Sunday. So that kicks off on May 20th tomorrow until May, 20, May 31st. It's $20 per car if you are a Zoo member and $40 per car if you are not a Zoo member. And you do have to make advanced reservations and we have the link to do that on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. So make sure you check out the site and the app to make those reservations in advance. So the reservations will be scheduled in one hour time slots and that's to help limit the number of vehicles per hour, maintain safety, and the final ticketed entry starts at 3 p.m. You will not be able to get out of your car while you are having that experience. So this means the public spaces are not gonna be open, so make sure you, everybody in the family uses the bathroom, especially if you got little ones with you before you leave the house to get in the car and go and enjoy that zoo experience. And this is also a great way to support the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo because since closing to the public on March 16th, the revenue for the zoo is down $1.5 million. And taking care of those animals is definitely expensive. So if you're in a position, you want to get out, you want to do something fun, you want to enjoy the animals, this is a great opportunity to do it. Again, $20 per car if you're a Zoo member, $40 per car if you are a NAA member. Okay, that has been our three news now early update for Tuesday, May 19th. I'll be back here at 2 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers from the Ohio Department of Health sharing that with you, along with all the other headlines that are topping WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I'll see you back here in a little bit. Everyone have a great rest of your morning and early afternoon. I'm Stephanie Haney.